I get sick when I'm around. I can't stand to be around. I hate everything about you. Everything about you? Everything about you? I hate everything about you. These are not the minutes of a Mumbai Indians team meeting, nor are these the lyrics of a song by Mohan Krishnamurti about the IPL. These are the lyrics of I Hate Everything About You, a song by right. Ugly Kid Joe. Hello and welcome to Bits and Pieces, the friendliest cricket podcast. And I am your host, Prashant DP. And here with us to talk about whatever it is that we usually talk about, we have with us Kostov Kumar, the prodigal son who has found his way back from the world of airy-fairy things like control percentages and strike rates. He's here with us today to help us answer the real deep questions, like who pissed in Hardik Pandya's kit bag and threw in a note saying, your kit bag stinks less than your innings today, when he was slaving <laughs> away in the middle to score 24 of 20. Or whether Bairstow's dismissals for Punjab are as funny as his dismissals when he plays for England. Say hi, Kostum, and say sorry a million times for depriving us and all of our nine listeners of the pleasure of hearing your voice for so many months. Yes, yes. Hello. It it feels uh, prodigal and all is too much, but uh, feels uh, good to be back among uh, like-minded uh, uh, fans of uh, Ravi Chandran Ashwin. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, Ash Biggo started already. Uh. <laughs> next, if jinxing was an art, this man is Michelangelo. He is Raphael, Picasso and Ravi Varma. There are rumours that as a young boy, he began his jinxing career 30 years ago by saying, Oh wow, Vinod Kamli is the next big thing. His latest scalp is Prasad Krishna and we wonder who will be next. We love him for the keenness of his eye and the sharpness of his wit. Please welcome the man we like to think of as our warden. Say hello to Varun Murli, a.k.a. Vamu. <laughs> Thanks, PDP. Nice to be back. Thank you. PDP correction. I, I, there is a Sam correction over a fact check already over here. We have to say that his latest victim is not Prasid Krishna, but Mukesh Kumar. After Prasid Krishna, he also nailed Mukesh, Mukesh Kumar on the cross. We had an Easter weekend, so we have to talk about the nailing on the cross and all that. He placed him on the cross and nailed him off directly. Ah, okay. So uh, but, my, my uh, suggestion think, is that... We, we will uh, find out today who the, who the next is going ah. to be. Ah. That's what. Anyway, next, we have a man. We have a man who has played cricket in four different countries, speaks five different languages, swears in six different languages, and supports Chennai Super Kings seven days a week. He has helped relaunch the career of an obscure actor from the South, whom we now know as Rajni Khan. And he shares his name <laughs> with the greatest Tamil speaking cricketer ever born. Say hello to Murli Sadagopan. Absolute pleasure and honor to be part of this and to be equated with the 800 legend. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. said? No, wait. Who said I was talking about Murli? Nah? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Thanks, Ram. I, what other Murli or Karthik? Oh my God. Yeah, it's Murli Karthik. That's what I thought. <laughs> no, it's actually Murli I thought. I thought. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought it was Sadagopan Ramesh. <laughs> exactly, da, <Vamo. laughs> And to be finally, part of that legacy, da. <laughs> And finally, the greatest artist of them all. Because a con on this scale is, after all, pure art. He has convinced himself, his spouse, his friends, and the world at large that he doesn't watch the IPL. And yet, last year, when Jadeja scored those winning runs in Ahmedabad, there were reports of a shirtless man with an I Heart Tala tattoo on his back, cycling up and down the banks of the Yara, screaming, Nayagan Meendum Varan, tears streaming down his ecstatic face. Mohan Krishnamurti claims that he was in bed at the time. A statement that no one, not even his spouse, can confirm. Welcome, Hank. Say hi. There are so many responses I can give to that. None of them <laughs> will be polite. <laughs> I, suffice to say, thank you so much. I don't. I seriously don't know what I'm doing on this podcast. Um, you're going to talk about IPL and so on. If you talk about test cricket, there is one test match going on. I might contribute to it. But let's see how this thing pans out. I'm going to run interference throughout the podcast. This is a, this is not a threat. It's a promise. 
It's okay. sometimes you know, Hank, you know, the Kapil Sharma keep inviting cricketers on his show. You'll see, right? Right? So, <laughs> <laughs> like that in the <laughs> show also. We wanted to invite you so you can give random thoughts like, oh, how is Kapil Dev performing today? What was the last run scored by MS Dhoni? And all of those things. That's it. It's, a, it's like an external person's view of something they are not exposed to. I guarantee you, I guarantee whatever I say will make sense because in the context of IPL, anything makes sense. Bah, all is much. good. But uh, but yeah, I mean, on that note, uh, it's already been uh, it's already been about ten days of the IPL. Uh, Cause what have been your thoughts? Who is which? Which games have you enjoyed watching? Which performances have stood out for you? Uh, the the issue with asking such a question is I don't even remember what I watched yesterday. Awesome. Right. <laughs> uh, but like You're I have. You're into the trap that it caused. Yeah. So I have a like like. What has uh, stuck out this time is the leadership narrative, right? You had uh, uh, Dhoni passing the baton on to uh, Rituraj Gaikwad, and you had the baton forcibly taken away from uh, Rohit Sharma. Apparently, if the fans are to be believed, uh, and given and hand, handed over to Hardik Pandya. And uh, tomorrow is like the first home game that Mumbai will have. Uh, this they're recording this on Sunday, thirty first of March, and first uh, uh, April is the. First home game that's going to be at Vankhede Stadium. Nobody knows what reception Hardik Pandya is going to get. I think this is the same stadium that also booed Tendulkar at one point, uh, right? Like <laughs> many, many, many years ago. So correct, correct. Uh, this is two thousand six against England. Yeah. So this is yeah. a very unforgiving crowd, largely. So uh, we do not know how that's going to pan out. Uh, but in all of this, right? Like it makes sense that uh, I am bringing up a topic that was very dear to me a year ago, and somehow it is still relevant even today. Uh, KL Rahul, right? Of uh, yesterday, quietly it was announced that he is going to be impact subbed out, and captaincy is going to be given to Nicholas Puran, right? And uh, nobody batted an eyelid. There are no fan clubs, uh, KL Rahul fan clubs or something asking why this is the case. Uh, nobody fighting for him on social media. Like how? Uh, I I I feel like uh, in the midst of all of this, we are forgetting. Uh, like uh, a player like KL Rahul, who would have like that's the thing. In any other team, if captaincy changes last minute or if someone is not fit or something, you would have some uh, talk about it. But while we are fighting about Hardik Pandya and Rohit Sharma, you had like KL Rahul coming in as an impact batter. This is like the peak gully cricket, right? You come in, you bat, and you go. Like he came in, he batted, he went. Somehow the talk of the town was not that. It was the fact that uh, a guy called Mayank uh, uh, Yadav ended up. Bowling at like one fifty, one fifty five kilometers an hour, but yeah, that's it's been a fun, weird IPL so far. It's going to be going forward, given that how the last ten days have been, it's going to be even more weird and even more fun. Is what I would say. It's a fantastic point to bring up about LSG in general. No, by keeping my KL Rahul joke session aside. Just what LSG managed to pull off to be able to keep winning or to kind of you know achieve the things they achieve in general is is a huge anomaly for me. Like we don't know if KL is not performing to the level there is. It is not like they are stacked up with stars. We didn't even know that there was a person called Mayank Yadav in their team who could bowl 150 on average for like four overs in a row. We didn't know any of those things. So I just don't think they, for whatever reason, they pick up the kind of narrative they deserve to. So nobody really talks about them. But I'm still stunned that. First, I didn't even know Nicholas Puran could captain. Two, I didn't know that KL could be removed from the captaincy. Either of these two, I think, should definitely deserve a lot more, uh, some amount of media attention, at least fairly. I'm just quite surprised, just like you. So, uh, so which are the which are the teams that have caught your eye now? Who's looking good at this stage? Can, can, can I, before that, but PDP, one thing. I might ah. just buy into this, lean into this captaincy thing. Ah. This whole IPL, basically, you know, even before the, this is going to be a captaincy debacle IPL, ah. is what I'm predicting. Even before it started, Dhoni ah. said, Mirko ni chahiye, and he ran away. Ah. Okay. So, that was the first, he was the first uh, victim, if you like, of the captaincy ni chahiye IPL season. So, Dhoni ran off. And he said, you know, I'm giving it out to Vikturaj. And then after that, you know, we had KLR who was supposedly the captain and suddenly, you know, Samparo, uh, who has never captained uh, a team anywhere in the history of his life, suddenly he's become captain and the other previous captain has become an impact sub. So that's Tamasha has happened. No one even noticed that is happening. 
Meanwhile, somewhere else, Hardik Pandya is supposedly the captain, but you know, half the team don't like him and they're rebel rebelling against him. He will be removed as, ca as captain. This is my prediction in the next few matches. He'll be removed as captain unceremoniously. He'll be dumped and then uh, Rohit will come back as captain. So that is also going to happen. Meanwhile, Pant, I don't know what he's doing. So that will also sort of happen. So half the teams will change their captaincy during this season is my prediction. What do you think about that? I, for, someone, Dhoni, for someone who doesn't follow the IPL, you exactly, see you exactly. know about this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, like I, 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 I forgot. I forgot half these things. Honestly, <laughs> like, I, it's my job to watch these games on a daily basis. Uh, like the, the the thing is, like, I, I, the only thing I'll say about the Pandya Rohit situation is like, something is being hidden, which is not being made transparent to the public. It's fine. It's the franchise's prerogative to deal with things however they want to. We can't. Uh, like I, I, I can't tell them what is the right way to do things. But fans are feeling slighted. Uh, some level of like the only comparison I can draw maybe is uh, your big ticket transfers that used to happen in football, right? You had like Figo joining Madrid and all like back in like the early late nineties, early two thousands. Uh, like that is maybe the only pro like. Low key comparison I can make, even though that was like the, the kind of stuff said about uh, Figo and uh, things thrown at him at the pitch. Like, they don't even compare to what we have seen so far. It is a little ugly, what at least what I'm seeing on social media and like what you're seeing people yell at the players. But a little bit of like, I don't know, a little bit of rivalry inside the team usually is okay. Like, you've had like we have the best Australian team, some of the best in Indian test teams. At some point, not everybody got along with each other all the time. But hang on, course, course, hang on, hang on. Just, just, just hold it there. Rivalry within the team, not everyone getting along with each other is okay. But we have about three or four players in Mumbai at the moment, as, at least. You know, I'm vicariously looking at all of this stuff, waiting for the entire thing to implode. Okay, that's my uh, you are, you lens are, on everything. For, for what it's worth, you are not the only one. Every IPL fan who's not following Mumbai Indians is looking forward to the same thing. There are people okay. who... So, yeah, yeah. The, the narrative basically is that there is a bunch of at least three or four players. And these are superstars, not just, you know, ordinary players. Robro and uh, Har, uh, what's his name? Sky and Bumra. These are legends of MI. Who are who don't their mind doesn't seem to be in the MI in you know firmament or whatever. I am just waiting for this whole bloody thing to implode and uh, you know everything going belly up uh, and and you know we uh, me having a great party at that point in time. What do you say about that? Vamu's Vamu's struggling to say something. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I I think all this is like made up like. Robro and Bumra have had like as good a start to the IPL as they have ever had. Like Bumra has been like, I mean, the bowler of the tournament by a country mile basically. And uh, really? Rohit for yeah yeah Rohit Rohit for a change has also been very good with the bat. If anything, like Pandya has struggled basically, like both yeah. with bat and ball. So I yeah. I think this is all like media narrative etc. Obviously, it's clear that like for somebody like Rohit Sharma, he who's captain of the India T20 World Cup team, I mean, this doesn't make sense to be playing under Hardik Pandya for Mumbai Indians, etc. Uh, for me, this is just a transition season. I don't think any of this thing is going to work. Like, um, if, if the Ambani's, we know them well, they will double down on Hardik after the end of this season. Uh, Bamu, that is a one, mega option. Just, just a quick question, right? Have Has MI been caught with their pants down or has Jessa been caught with his pants down? That is the question. Because, you know, the decision was made to appoint Hardik because everyone thought he's going to be the captain of India and suddenly Jessa came in and said that, you know, uh, Rohit is going to be the captain of India. So, one of them have been caught with their, with their pants down. Who? MI. Achan, okay. <laughs> I don't think Jesha can ever be slighted in, 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 in the course of any of this. Uh, I personally think whatever like the Ambani's do is still in the corporate world, right? The, equal, uh, the equivalent of that happening in the Indian uh, setup, I think, is very, very rare. It's not like that overnight they're going to come and say, oh, Rohit Sharma is uh, stepping aside. You've got Rutraj Gaikwad to become the captain of the Indian cricket team. Like those things are not going to happen overnight, <laughs> I think. 
But the jokes that I think are on MI are, I, I completely agree that Rohit has been brilliant, Bumrah has been outstanding too. But there is something that brings this team together. Like it, they function as a unit. They always had individual performers. Even like random uncles like Pollard and all used to perform for them. But there was the, that, that thread that brought them together in the name of Rohit Sharma that I think they're completely lacking. Because Hardik Pandya is walking in like he's on MDMA and like sitting and like doing some head bobbing thing while coming <laughs> when they need 300 runs of seven balls or something like that and talking and fist bumping. And then while bowling, there is this weird sense of forced sense of calm he's bringing where Somebody sitting for four fours in a row and he's smiling at them and appreciating like he's some some deep villain and I'm out. <laughs> and that guy is like, you can outthink me and you lost, you idiot. So what is the point of the outthinking? Like this major vibe you're putting, if you think that you want to win the vibe trophy, they haven't brought that trophy yet into IPL. Yeah. <laughs> they have fair play, then they have winner. They don't have a best vibe trophy. So uh, this Hardik Pandya vibe thing is not like working with me. And I also think sometimes, yes, in is right, the narrative matches what you see. Like, uh, when Hardik Pandya is saying, Rohit, go field at the boundary. They are showing that exact one point where he's stretched out and saying, oh, look at Hardik swearing and yelling at Rohit Sharma, a senior cricketer and the captain of the Indian team. All these things just fit in so beautifully for Twitter. I don't, like he says, I don't know what is happening inside. Maybe they are hugging and kissing inside the, you know, uh, change room and everything is normal. But this narrative fits fine. But as a team, I think they've completely lost the thread that held them together, which means that even if somebody performs, I don't see MI finishing anywhere above it. So, oh, wait. Uh, oh, big call. No, so actually for me, the, the team that has... Uh, I mean, I, I watched one IPL game at the stadium. I watched the, the CSK Gujarat Titans game. Uh, my main attraction there was uh, to see Shubban Gill. But uh, sadly, he didn't score too many. But for me, the the interesting thing about Chennai this year is that the the whole idea that you know Chennai is the spin spin heavy team and they have like the spinning pitch, it's not been playing out that way this year at Chepok. It's been a good hard through surface like the Chepok of the 90s almost, where you had very good bounce and and stuff like that. And their seamers have been outstanding this year. Whether it was Mustafizur the first game. Or Patirana, oh my god. I mean, nobody was picking him up. Like, it's the first time I'm watching him bowl live and it is a thrilling experience because he is getting that pace, that wind-up in that last sling. No one's picking it up. And uh, they've been, for me, they've been really, really exciting to watch. Also, I hey, think... Hang on, is this the game in which Patirana went and did Namaskaram to Dhoni before bowling and that, all that? I know, I mean, I, I saw that, but I mean, I saw that later on Twitter. I didn't actually notice it at the ground. Uh, so it is, hey, one it is question. No, uh, Hank, 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 is there anything about the IPL that you have not watched? Nothing, <laughs> uh, everything you've seen. Like, okay. seriously, like, yeah, even, yeah. even I... Like, even like I claim to be following the IPL closely, I didn't know about this. Like, <laughs> no, so also that's been... <laughs> That's been debunked. Like he wasn't doing namaskaram and all. He was picking up his bowling marker, yeah, yeah. and like the, the 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 shot that went viral is when the spider cam went past and it looked like he had touched his feet. And another angle came out which said that it is just him lifting his bowling marker anyway. Yeah. And he anyway kisses the ground before he starts bowling. So like those two those two things overlapped. Yeah. yeah. But I, 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 we don't need we don't need like uh, fact checking and all for IPL, but like I felt like that had to be said because like the, uh, the just that's the thing like with Chennai at least this time it feels a little better that uh, it, it feels like there's a plan in place with uh, Dhoni stepping away for a bit and giving it to Guy Quad. Like it feels a little less less rushed compared to how the Jadeja no, thing was but, a couple of years ago. No, but but cause I'll tell you this. I mean I. Okay, I mean, all keepers are just the field and all that, but uh, Dhoni with this CSK team, it's actually like in 5th division cricket and 6th division cricket, there'll be like this one uncle and there'll be 10 young kids playing with that one uncle and that one uncle may not be captain, but, you know, basically he is the sort of de facto captain. Very much that kind of vibe with uh, the CSK team. I mean, Dhoni on the field is... Uh, adjusting the field, he's moving players around and he's doing it all the time. And uh, I mean, all like I said, all keepers are just the field, but uh, this was complete control. And he is not, and he's micromanaging every fielding position to the point where he's saying, Move a foot this way, move a foot that way. 
so he was very much in charge at least of that side of things of course a lots of other things that go into captaining an ipl team it's not like just Deep, deepak chahar also said in the i think in the post match or in mid evenings of that show that uh, i have to look both sides and look at rituraj and i to look at dhoni before i come yeah. <laughs> that yeah 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 but i mean the other thing that i noticed this time was that you know the just the level of awareness is amazing uh, he's so he's standing up to the stumps and uh, sai sudarshan is late cutting right so he's actually got his back to the fielder dhoni has got his back to third man because he's facing the bowler up front so he moves his hand behind and he's like gesturing behind his bum basically for that fielder to get finer and then at a certain point he stops like he's uh, i mean those are definitely things that you know i haven't seen with too many others you know that level of 360 game awareness of what's happening around him it's quite impressive to watch uh but the other thing that's changed with csk this year i think is that they were always at least in the past this very kg canny kind of franchise you know they didn't take unnecessary risks and things like that they were uh, and that's a very dhoni thing in some way you know slightly conservative i think that's changed i think that's definitely changed in the last couple of seasons definitely in this season i saw it when uh sai kishore was bowling to rahane basically stepped out and slogged the first ball saying i don't care if i get out and then dube comes in and he is not playing those next five balls like those are the first five balls of his innings he is playing those next five balls like these are the only five balls i'm going to get from sai kishore i'm going to wallop him and that's exactly what he did it's not the kind of thinking that you would have associated with csk from say 4 5 years back so okay. those it's a function of the it's been what one year now since the new rules have come in right yep. uh, allowing an impact sub so everybody every team now has the luxury of having one extra batter in their lineup yep right and it's after one season it has now percolated into everybody that they can take risks yep like it's not a uh, like and it makes sense when uh, i would say the team that has taken it to the next level is sunrisers right like all like the match that they lost was what i think barely a boundary or two right against kkr uh, they, they were going full ham against the ball and the match that they won it was it, it, i think mumbai hit more sixes at the end of the day but somehow uh, because they got a better start like sunrise has got a better start and like again that same captain sitting comes in wide and bumrah bowl earlier etc etc but like everyone is has fully not only fully adjusted to the new team uh, team rules of having the impact sub allowed but uh, they have completely given up uh showing the playing 11 at the toss like if you have noticed that okay so what's your playing 11 like i have no idea i think it's the same like last time we were figuring <laughs> every single toss is like this now because people come with two team sheets right right at this yeah. point like uh, and you hand over the one based on the toss that you win and that's actually very that's fair you should not like i feel that should be in regular cricket games also why should you reveal uh like why should your plans because the plans would change based on whether you're batting or bowling first right yeah and uh like that way I, we are seeing a lot more risk being taken, a lot more risk being rewarded because, like the the toss at uh, the eleventh at the toss and the impact sub has basically given people a lot more flexibility. Like someone, no, like, no, someone. Yeah, cla- hmm. Clarification. Hmm. Clarification. So teams actually go with so captains go actually go with two teams. Yeah. To the toss yeah. is it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, there has been some how, talk. How is it? How is it right? How is it? because in in any other form of cricket i mean this is let's assume that this is a form of cricket in any other form of cricket you you have to go with a team sheet how can you go two yeah as you allow two team sheets one for batting one for bowling because then your impact sub will change accordingly based on who you pick so so, so you go to the you go to the team you go okay i'm 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 playing this out you hmm. go to the you go to the toss hmm. if you win you're saying i'm going to use the batting team and if you lose you're using the bowling team is it yeah Yeah, I mean, it, if, if, you, if you end up batting happens? first, yeah, if you end up batting first, you hand over the team sheet that you prepared for that uh, scenario. Okay. And if you're bowling first, you hand over the team sheet that you had prepared for that scenario. Yeah, I so, think that's fair. I think in a, in a sense, it's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So but, but, with with these two things coming in, uh, the I think the only change that needs to be done is this new smart replay, whatever. It's taking more time with these smart replays than I'd imagine. Yeah. If games are going past eleven o'clock on a regular basis. Something needs to be done 
but uh, uh, that's why i feel sunrisers are the uh, not the sleeper team they're very flamboyant but sunrisers will do well i i don't want to say rajasthan are the sleeper team because uh, every single year we call them the team oh they're such so nice on paper or whatever and like every year i, I don't know they just second half of the season they just fall short so uh, it's it, it, it should be like it, the fact that you're seeing more sixers at uh, chepak is both a function of csk adapting to the new uh, rules and the fact that that's where cricket is going is what i feel hey gaus i have one question before we move in individual teams and talk about srh uh, the fact that they introduced this new rule with uh, the additional bouncer has it statistically shown more medium pacers bowling through the 20 than spinners which is normally the 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 for in in ipl generally like the middle overs we see more it looks like more medium pacers and 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 fast bowlers are bowling through the middle overs and even in the end of 20 it looks like one or two spinners have bowled and three or four medium pacers have bowled do you think this is because of the two bouncers rule or uh, starts in that no i still think people are playing good match up cricket the two bouncer the two bouncer rule what it has helped is a uh, batter would usually when they know a bouncer has come in they will dig deep into their crease knowing fully well the ball has to come fuller right uh like or they would come a little bit further so that they can get the second bounce and get over with like what has happened now is uh most uh team most batters have to like prep in a way where just because one bouncer is done doesn't mean they're off the hook firstly but what i've noticed is a bad bowler is still a bad bowler like someone like an alzari joseph is just bowling short at someone like shivam dobe is like chucking pies at somebody at, at this point right it's a, he can eat short balls for breakfast so you still need to be smart about it and uh, it, it's it's one thing that uh, w- w- that's a rule change that i like specifically because it is giving the bowling team something something to work with like yep. you can bowl two bouncers to shut a batter up and push them back and then maybe i'm seeing a lot of slower balls this time that's what i've noticed like the mayank uh, yadav uh, speeds can be great and all but the uh, ones that got wickets were the ones where he was at 140 141 not 155 156 right so like most smart bowlers are doing really well with the two bouncer rule uh, we had like stain uh, uh, even tweeting about it that uh, both look like in hindi i'll be saying but pole khol hoega both look right you, people that are not good at attacking the short ball if it comes in front of a good bowler like say a bumrah or something then like bumrah's figures are pretty good so far he was one of the only people who was below 10 runs and over in srh and he had i think three or four wickets in the first game it will help these things help I think people are still playing matchup cricket, though. I don't think the short ball has really changed that. The number of super fast bowlers that are being identified every day in IPL. How is Umran Malik doing that? You tell, Ra. You are only watching, no? <laughs> <laughs> How is Umran Malik doing? No, like no, do. Hmm. Go on. Talk. No, I think uh, Umran has not had a great two years. I think uh, even oh, okay. in domestic cricket, like. uh said mushtaq and all he's been taken to the cleaners uh, a bit so now come to real cricket let's talk about how he's doing in in that no no real cricket he played like i think he he, he played for srh in the last game and he was really like taken to the cleaners so yeah i mean i think i don't think like uh, i think umran probably needs to reinvent himself a bit uh, uh, i i just don't think that like for him like a skiddy bowler like him uh, it's becoming easy for batsmen to just line him up and uh, uh, hit him basically so yeah and i i always get the feel when umran malik is bowling that it's a white rubber ball i mean it's it comes that quickly and it goes that quickly also uh, yeah. <laughs> very much that kind of a feel but yeah vamu while i mean tell us thoughts about rcb this year what's what's changed what hasn't So as to what has changed is the team name, uh, <laughs> the logo. <laughs> so the whole branding exercise has changed. Um, honestly, uh, the pitch also has been a bit of a surprise uh, for me. Like the pitches at a lot of venues have been surprising. Like uh, even Ekana yesterday was quite like batting friendly. I mean. it wasn't like a challenging wicket for uh, batsmen so uh, uh, kolkata also, also i think the one game that we saw it was fairly like batting friendly wicket so the wickets at a lot of the venues have taken me a bit by surprise maybe it's just like curators being conservative because 
of the long summer etc and wickets and their worry that wickets may not last till the end of the ipl um rcb like never had any great expectations i think this is a transition year for them i, uh, I firmly believe that they don't expect much of this team either this year uh, i think the purchase of cameroon green uh, was a case in point uh, uh, i don't think it i think it was more a more a purchase with a view to try and retain him ahead of the next mega auction uh, i feel so uh-huh. you said something like this guy is going to be the best number 4 in the world and all that sort of stuff ha so it's not as if he is like 46 or something no he's still got time ahead of him right <laughs> no i'm just going per your introduction whether you nailed him on the cross already or whether he, you know he's actually got potential and all that uh-huh. continue 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 so yeah I, I, uh, rcb have a fundamental problem with uh, faf duplessis as the captain he it's up one oc spot for them uh, uh i thought that was a poor buy at last year's auction uh, but yeah i mean virat kohli has become such a larger than life individual at that franchise they had to get in a captain who could get along well with virat and could command virat's respect so i think that's a problem for them uh, but honestly i mean it's a bit of a counter view i've been very happy to see how virat has battered this ipl especially against spinners like i've seen some strokes that i thought he had shelf forever uh, coming back uh, he still like batting at a, a comparatively mediocre strike rate as to what should be done but uh, yeah i mean there are signs of improvement i think that he is going to have a really big season this year Hey, wow, what, what a high critic man comparatively mediocre compared to yeah. last time what strong words <laughs> well, fine, fine, fine. 2020 uh, 2021 and 2022 he was on an average strike rate of 119 and in 2023 he really picked it up to 138 and he stood up to nearly 140 now which i think is absolute monster by kohli's general standards right i'm just saying mediocre is a strong word i'm not disagreeing with the general tone of what Varmuli saying, I'm just saying. Just yeah. Like, no, no, yeah. Super, super, super like I, IIT prof telling his son that oh, you mm-hmm. came first. Is that the bare minimum you could do? Kind of a, you know, validation. Like I expect you. I expect you to. Why are you yeah. the first law thermodynamics? I expect you to be the zero law. What is wrong? With you? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you bring in the neighboring sections and at least get better marks than them. Kind of a answer this is. But this I, is. I, I, This is fully from Centum territory, okay? Please, yeah. <laughs> please understand. This is coming com- coming completely from Centum territory. This guy has a strike rate. I just checked now, one hundred and forty-two or something like yeah, that. One hundred forty-three is one hundred forty-three. One forty-three. There you go. He's outdoing See, himself. I, I can But check, Hank, I'll give uh, you a bone to play with here. This you should be interested because this is not IPL per se. This Virat Kohli is needed if you are going to go to America and try and play T20. So if, if we are not dropping this chap, and if other batters can play around him, I think the Dubais of the world are going to find a way to sneak in anyway. And I think if Virat can play this eighty of fifty-five, uh, at least every alternate game, I think we can really clock a solid hundred and eighty, hundred and ninety score game on game, and find ourselves a way into the knockouts. I think is is kind of why I think I'm selfishly super happy that uh, Virat is performing the way it is. RCB, I couldn't care less because uh, it, 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 all the things you say are right, but you still haven't talked about the biggest chunk, which is not even Faf. They have no bowlers in their team. I like the, that P Dog joke holds true because it is truly like the <laughs> lowest they have sunk to. They have got who were available and said, "Okay, if you can, you do you have a bowling action? Come and bowl for me." That whatever Virat tries and I, I, it's such a it's a hilarity slash sadness and tragedy. That Virat puts on an outstanding show. Hits around the park. His wrists are like so supple. He just like flicks it for six and all. Sunil Narain comes in and takes the man of the match by batting. <laughs> Sunil Narain did not know he could bat. Like he got run out one match. The other match he forgot his walking stick. And then he comes in out of nowhere and he whacks fifty or some twenty five odd balls. And the game is completely shut out. They didn't know who to give the man of the match to. So I think they have no bowlers in their in their uh, arsenal at all. And I think this, they're going to continue to keep losing no matter how good Virat. Looks. But uh, uh, okay, you want to? Okay, I'll I'll wait. Yeah. No, no, no. So I was just going to say that that's actually the perfect segue to the team which has no batting, which is actually KKR, who uh, basically they rely. I mean, I think Vamo is making the point on our group 
that beyond that top five, they don't have they don't have much below that in terms of batting options. So thoughts on KKR guys? No, for so for a, I just ahead of this episode, I went ahead and listened to the podcast which uh, which we put out immediately after the auction, the two hour long one with me, uh, uh, Max and Tarek. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to revise like what I had said during that podcast in terms of like who would qualify for the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mamu, Mamu, please, 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 stop there, stop there. Show seat now, we have to put full <laughs> pranam and all that. You did preparation for this podcast. <laughs> So I, I I I I actually like uh, had like um, mentioned then uh, that MI would not qualify, uh, even though that team looks super strong at that point in time. Uh, then my four uh, semi semi finalists or like the four qualifiers were um, GT LSG, uh, Chennai and KKR actually. So I had back KKR to get through. Uh, uh, I think they uh, got the, I mean, there was a lot of criticism of them after the auction for like paying crazy money for Mitchell Stark, etc. But I felt that if they got the entire team fit, uh, they would have a good chance of qualifying because they have all these crazy mystery spinners, etc, etc. And, 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 uh, and uh, this Russell fellow has just like, gone into some other orbit over the last 6-9 months ever since uh, I think uh, was it England who played West Indies in the T20s yeah yeah so uh, starting that series he's just been like amazing like both with bat and ball and that kind of cricketer he can just like single handedly take them uh, to the uh, uh, qualifiers I believe their batting I mean, it's it it looks a bit uh, wiffy waffy, but uh, this is a team that can do well with 160, 170 type scores, I believe. But is it possible for a team with two IRs to actually win? I, I can't. I, I can't go any higher than that. Hey, you know how <laughs> earlier I had said that there is a there is a thread that holds teams together, then and that's not there. Rohit Sharma is not there. So Mumbai are falling apart. <laughs> the opposite is happening with KKR. <laughs> There is a person they don't want to like. Is the captain somewhere in the field? Okay, he's there. Okay, let's continue playing. Like it looks like the players are playing. Like they're checking in to see if the captain is still alive. He's still walking, and they are achieving great things. That Harshit Rana over is a case study in what should a captain not do for your team to win. He went off and stood all the way in the deep, and he's constantly saying random things. And at the end, he comes and gives feedback as if like he was the one guiding his bowler through the whole thing. He was never even there. Hashid Rana tried 7,000 different things and he landed up winning the match and showed some Sharuka moves and now Sharuka came and had to so, yeah, yeah, so there is a so this is the KKR SRS game, right? Uh, yeah. And uh, Andre Russell won the player of the match uh, award. So there are, there are two contradictions there. Or sorry, it's one contradiction. Uh, first, uh, Shreya Sairi's interview, right? Hashid Rana's bold is incredible over... Like, firstly, that was an incredible match. One of the... Like, you don't expect such a match within the first four days of the IPL, honestly. Yes. Right. So it's what incredible match, firstly. Uh, it was Sunrise's game to lose. They should have won that game. And uh, somehow Arshad Rana bowls a really, he didn't bowl a really good over. Uh, class in my, it just holds out. Like he, he runs out of luck. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened there. And uh, Shreya Sayer has asked, uh, okay, so like what was your plan for the last over and all? And he's like, I looked into uh, Harshad Rana's eyes and he said he was nervous and everything. And uh, I said, it's okay. Even if he lose, it's fine. Uh, we will figure out whatever. Like he was, he was trying to, he was saying he was being a good captain and everything. And then Andre Russell is interviewed and Andre Russell is like, I uh, Harshad Rana asked for the ball. He wants these big match moments. Such people, uh, people, you need co good confidence to bowl the last over. And the fact that he asked for the ball and didn't shy away from it means he's, he's going to be a good bowler. Somebody's lying. <laughs> no, see, I'll tell you, I, I will break down the three things. This normally happens once you get to see the movie and then three different things happen, right? So Harshit Rana is confused. He's like, I don't know what to do. They may give me the ball, not give me the ball. They land up giving him the ball. He's like, okay, I may lose, I may win. He lands up winning. 
Now, quickly before the presentation happens, they're discussing, hey, how should we present ourselves? Captain should look good or bowler should look good? Think of this carefully and go. <laughs> Captain decides I should look good. But bowler has told everybody else, please make me look good. I don't know how I landed up in it. So all narratives land up getting presented to the media. But I'm telling you, nobody in that team knows what is happening. Like Narain, when he comes back after scoring season 49, you see when he walks back, he looks like he just, his wife got beaten up outside on the road or something like that. He's walking back like that, dragging his bat. And I'm like, you just played the innings. Like, you yes. sent bowlers around the park. Like, they are still crying inside. He walked out, sat, and he's like, somebody give me some coffee. I, the worst thing in my life happened. The game was won. He comes to pick up the man of the match. Like, they had asked him to clean up garbage outside his house. <laughs> Everything he looks at, like, it's the worst thing that they could ask him to do. And... I, I keep, and they keep panning to Kohli from time to time. Like, he's some guy who, he's not the captain. He gave up the captaincy. Indian team also is not the captain. They keep panning to him to show he scored 83. He still lost. What a sad guy. I, I can't <laughs> understand this media narrative at all. And I feel so bad for these people. Anyway, end of rant. <laughs> so, so, essentially, look, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying this because we have Kohli, who is not captain, who is actually captain of a team. We have Rohit Sharma, who is not captain, but actually captain of a team. We have Dhoni, who's not captain, but actually captain of a team. We have Pant, who's captain, but does not want to captain a team. And we have Shreya Sayer, who's captain of the team, but someone else should be captain of the team. This is great. This is a great narrative that's panning out. Is, am I, have I got it right so far? The best when part about the best part about Shreya's was like before last match, I think it was a RCB game toss only. Like I think it was Ian Bishop who asked him, like, what is your team today? He looked at his hand like he had two sheets of paper and he literally told them, I have two sheets of paper with me. I don't know why they have given me two sheets of paper. I know this fellow is playing, but I don't know instead of whom he is playing, but I've got two sheets of paper in front of me. I mean, I couldn't be believe like he's a captain. He's supposed to know why at least like forget <laughs> who is playing and who is not playing and all that. At least he should know why he has two sheets of paper with him, right? Like <laughs> Mahmoud, it, 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 you were, it, it you were pumping like, you know, for, for him at one point in time. What is what's going on? Like, I I was like shocking, like I <laughs> like you are a seasoned IPL captain. You should at least know and this is not like the first match of the tournament is captaining either, right? It's the second or the third match. I think it was the second match. So, he should know at least why goddamn he has two pieces of paper with him, right? <laughs> no, but he, on, a, on, a, on a related subject, uh, the game that <clears throat> the game that I was lucky enough to see, uh, Ashish Nera is basically patrolling the boundary like a football manager. Okay. He's not sitting in the dugout for even two minutes during the during the uh, during uh, Chennai's uh, Chennai's batting, he's basically roaming around. He's always there. He's always talking, always gesticulating. Every timeout, he's in the he's in the center. So I mean, uh, I don't think Gujarat got too many things tactically wrong. But I just wonder, you know, it it was such a contrast to Fleming, whom we barely saw actually outside the dugout. Like if if you're if you're talking about Gujarat now, right? Like if yeah, I didn't know this was the team review after one week, but uh, uh, the, what the I think the first game, the game that they should have lost against MI, which they ended up winning. Uh, the player of the match went to uh, Sai Sudarshan, yeah, right. And uh, Sai Sudarshan hit like uh, I think on a one thirty strike rate, one twenty strike rate, forty odd he had hit or something. Okay, he had no idea he was. Like he had no idea why he is player of the match. He had said, I, I think, I, like you could tell it from his face. And uh, uh, the Crick Info has like this whole impact thing, which player has the biggest impact, and also they just rank players based on who had the biggest impact. Sai Sudarshan was tenth on that list. Okay. Like he was not even like even the first three people were the Mohit. Sharma had bowled well. That was not considered. Uh, uh, Omar Zai had taken two wickets and done. Mm. Uh, uh, and I think it's got like some 17 or 18 of 10 balls or something not considered. Somehow this guy comes in with the player and like because all this happened the same confusion where everyone is wondering why Bumrah didn't bowl earlier, why Hardik like, uh, had one dog he ran into the field during the match and everyone is like wondering uh, like Hardik Pandey was gesturing towards the dog, lots of jokes are coming around like that, that, that match was pure chaos and in the middle of all of that uh, <laughs> 
like somehow gujarat managed to sneak a win there and uh, now everyone is saying oh ashish nehra was the real uh, guy pulling the strings behind hardik pandya hardik pandya doesn't know anything like i i this was all, like before we started the actual recording i said like the uh, it's been a fun idea so far because it's been random it has been random like there has we, we don't we, even if you're watching the game you don't know what's happening it's and uh, i i would say that has that has been fun <laughs> and yet and yet when you claim to have not watched a single game you know everything that is happening yeah <laughs> but there is one guy one captain though who looks like he has a plan is performing like a captain and seems to be captaining his team and actually knows his team and unfortunately it is our most hated pack comments it really looks like that dude kind of has something not most hated. i'm sorry not most hated the like, yeah, that, that that's too much yeah. just because he won the final and all that's too much <laughs> and i don't really hate him though i just want to say it because i hate that team as a whole but that dude clearly seems to have like a plan even when he bowls at the death when it's a difficult time and the way he's marshaling his resources it really looks like he's only sorted captain right of course everybody some are like moon who does not watch the ipl but knows everything says like people are ghost captaining and like there are <laughs> some guys who are on the field and not off the field some guys who are looking like they're on drugs but this guy <laughs> seems to be the most sorted of the lot and his team is also severely like really performing well like it's not like somebody's doing more than what they're capable of every person is doing their job the mathrams the classins everybody's doing their job well and he also i think he dropped umran today so he's also like very like specific about the way he wants to like give the right people to perform continuous chances i wouldn't be surprised if they are in the top 4 and at least they should go for like the dikan says for kavya maran sik you want uh, pat comes to win another trophy yeah. like which has uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be the one trophy that every any indian team can win and like you want pat comes to win that one also raj <laughs> pat comes will get all the way through the knockouts and he'll come and face a team in yellow i want him to feel what it's like to face a team in yellow at their home da this will happen then you come to chepok a uh, uh, strawberry farmer will be waiting there <laughs> and then you will see what happens when you come and fight a team in yellow and pat comes will feel it too so that part of the narrative is not changing and like, i think century was in the last year of, of uh, whatever like being able to speak or something so i think it's perfectly good for them to close it out <laughs> when he's like still there and being able to like comprehend what is happening you may think like ashwin played really well and they're like sir ashwin plays for another team now so those kind of things they'll say it'll be nice i still think that but i i, I like good teams who have a plan come and perform well so i'll give that credit to pat for sure but in in the team in the in the context of good teams performing well and you know doing really well and good players doing really well for their teams and so on in which match in the recent uh, uh india england series uh did um, dhruv jurel and kuldeep yadav put up a really good fight and you remember the scores uh of jurel and uh, and kuldeep yadav and, and which match it was any any one of you yeah kuldeep played the most number was 130 balls or something he played along with jurel and then jurel scored 91 kuldeep scored 32 of 130 or something right that's the match yeah, talking close, about right very yeah. close very close any any yeah. takers to fourth, any, fourth any test right fourth test fourth test fourth yeah, test yeah. which 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 place was it ranchi right this was ranchi right ranchi okay. yeah and 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 murli your your offer was 91 that uh, jurel scored of 150 balls or something you said Yeah, because I know he played a few balls lesser than Kuldeep because Kuldeep was the boss, the boss in that means. So, but pretty yeah, he scored. And and you said that Kuldeep scored thirty two of one thirty two balls or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah. close. Twenty eight of one thirty one. Now PDP got yeah. it right even without looking at open uh, cricket info and all that. Twenty eight <laughs> of one thirty one. I know where you're uh, going with this, Hank. I know where you're going with it. <laughs> okay, yeah. so I will. <laughs> wait, 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 uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, There was one sorry. match. So this uh, is you. You nailed it. Like to the ball. to the day to which match it was it was the fourth test ranchi 131 balls 148 balls 91 actually it was 90 close and 20 you said 30 is actually 28 that kuldeep got of 131 balls damn close which match did uh, dinesh kartik get run out in the ipl almost <laughs> in the last over or something like that yesterday da Hey, I haven't seen all that many games and all yeah, that. This right? is yesterday. <laughs> Chuma, this is Hank nibbing randomly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just putting it out there. B- oh. Whether anyone knows, you know, it's, it's my theory that every game kind of blends into it. And we're trying to build theory and facts and, you know, theory and all sorts of frameworks and all that. So, which game did Dinesh Karthi get run out? You were saying yesterday. 
Was it actually yeah. yesterday? I haven't seen that. Yet. Murli is saying he hasn't got a clue. So it, there was, are it was day before. Dada, what? Yeah. Now, one hour we have been talking about almost each and every game of this IPL. <laughs> and then you are like asking questions like, do we remember what happened in the IPL and all that? Here, poor fellow Kaus is like recalling Sai Sudarshan scoring 45 of 39 balls, being 10th <laughs> on cricket for impact list, still getting man of the match. The man of the match level he remembers. You tell me who won man of the match in that fourth India-England test match first. Wait, wait, wait. You told me. You no, just reverse, told me. Wait, 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 wait. You, you just told me how many balls could the Piazza face to nearly two. I'm not talking how many he made. You you got to within how many balls, within two balls of how many balls he faced. That's all. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that. Hey, we, hey, I'm waking up at 4.30 a.m. with an alarm. My wife is yelling at me when I'm sitting and watching test match cricket in Portugal and all. Right? So of course, I'll remember my random <laughs> thing. Like, fuck, going and winning first place in the pub quiz. I can host the pub quiz because I'm watching cricket like that. Sitting here wearing white and white and all. My wife is like, you look like a ghost at 4.45 in the morning. I don't know why I married a mental patient. In the, I, I, weekends, you're playing cricket. Uh, weekdays, you're sitting and watching cricket like this. If we are in Portugal, nobody even knows to spell cricket here. They yeah. think it's an insect. So, I, of course, of course, I remember our garbage and all that, those things. But I can't remember why Dinesh Karthi got out. I don't even know what times he's wearing suit and commentating what times he's wearing red color and playing cricket. Even he does not know those things. So that and all I can't answer. So don't nib like that and all. Plus, we have cows here. Cows to make you remember that one match where he used his left pinky to scratch his right bum and all. He's got this. So we know in unbelievable levels of stats and like little things that happen. So, Hank, if you shoot like that, Gauss will take <laughs> cannons out. Cannons and fire. The, the, the thing is, I don't even I, I don't even need to do that because this is like he, he clearly watches the IPL. Like <laughs> he does too. Yeah. He does too. It's like I, I would just say come out of the closet and like just embrace the fact <laughs> that you Patirana do watch the IPL. On some moment. Like, yeah. Patirana himself doesn't remember the story on some moment. He remembers the fact that he went and got blessings <laughs> from Sarat Kumar. Remember ah, this bullshit this is, and all don't this, try with me. <laughs> This is, this is very like when you show one finger, three are pointing towards you type scene is happening here. Like I like I, I don't even I think I, I am I think I'm coming returning to the squad after a year, year and a half, and I feel like nothing has changed. This is like a like the RCB dressing room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh... No, so like, if you don't want to, like, I, I, I will, I will still, I will uh, take the point where okay, IPL discussion is a lot. I get that. We have two other things also happening at the same time. One is a supposed rivalry between Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, and the other is uh, apparently Babar Azam has been announced as captain again. After they, they have, they have taken away captaincy from Shaheen Shah Afridi and given it back to Babar Azam after one series. And now people are wondering why that is the case. At the same time, uh, some Avengers assemble scene is happening where people are coming out of retirement all of a sudden. And you have Mohammed, you have Mohammed Amir, you have uh, Imad Wasim announcing that they are available for selection for the World Cup. We don't know how it's going to go in the month of June. Uh, but yeah, this see the thing is with the, the IPL, right? It's 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 good. It's it's like watching a good soap opera every day where you don't know what's going to happen next, and like you don't need to remember bits and pieces of it as long as you remember what the main characters are doing. So, and then that, that's more than enough for me. Because to your point, okay, so there was this narrative building up over the last year that the atmosphere in the Pakistan dressing room is becoming more healthy, that there is more fellowship, that there is better bonding. Now, what would any responsible PCB board official do? You do something to break that up. Obviously. Like, you have to. Like, how can you have a harmonious Pakistan team? It does not exist. And therefore, you create this Kalesh between two different captains and create two different camps and have two different sets of stories. Basically, they are doing today what the Ambani's did a year ago. So, there is... There is... <laughs> so, like, I... Uh, just like, thinking about that, right... Uh... Shaheen Shah Afridi was known, to, uh, like, I think he won two back-to-back -back, uh, titles, uh, PSL titles. Yep. And uh, both were of the last over and like everyone was like, wow, like what great captaincy, Babar Azam can't. So, like he's too rigid in what he does and everything. And then they handed him captaincy for barely one series. He lost. Not only did he lose for one, I just, I remember vividly that this was that same Pakistan series where uh, he was rested from the final test that he could prepare for the T20 series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
right and uh, so the one against england no uh, australia australia sir yeah, yeah and uh, after that he goes on to not only lose 4-1 but then his team finishes dead last in uh, the pakistan super league and now captain is taken away from him I, i i am just saying it's not going to hold well for whoever india's openers are for the first pakistan for the, for the first game india versus pakistan is going to be the first game <laughs> this is you do not see these are people that you do not want to give them any more chance to prove themselves they are already very well proven and now we are put like the like you said pcb is deliberately not del- no, i wouldn't say deliberately that's also putting it to strongly but the circumstances are such that he is now in a position where he will want to prove himself again and the first international game i think uh, after the ipl ends and before the like between the full member teams will be the opener india pakistan yeah. opener yeah. so we, we don't know yeah. I don't know how that's going to go. Depending on whether Hank successfully manages to transport bamboo poles and like drop in pitches Roll. and all ahead yoga of Yoga mat pitch. Ahead yeah. of the, <laughs> yoga mat pitch and all ahead yeah. of that. Like how is that going? This whole Babar Azam thing like uh, reminds me of uh, how in like, I mean, our parents used to go and like uh, bargain for tomatoes in the market basically. Like you go, <laughs> I think initially like Babar Azam... PCB had offered like Babar Azam, like just the T20 captaincy. Then Babar Azam came back, said like, no, I want to be captain of all three formats for me to be T20 captain. Then Babar Azam, then PCB seems to have come back and said like, na tera, na mera, tum bas, you take T20 and ODI captaincy, test captaincy, you leave it with us. And Babar Azam seems to have said, yes. So it's like full bargaining process has like happened in between basically for the Pakistan. Uh, just just to say that, this is this is just it's crazy what what's happening there and there's any time the pendulum keeps shifting so quickly there is something more fundamentally wrong than uh, than what appears to be the case by the way full disclosure i've asked zainab to to drop a voice note for us for us to include and hopefully she includes at least two or three gades in this uh, voice note but we have asked her to send a voice note on this i mean from 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 a from a pakistani fans perspective to have that uh, that lens but what's happening there seems to suggest you know any time the pendulum shifts so so badly and and essentially that's what i'm waiting to see happen at maybe mi where you know that pendulum shifted and then back and then maybe back again but um, i i'd like to see what why pakistan made the choice that they did more deeply than just saying oh probably is a better choice probably the uh, earlier one is a bad choice cause what do you think no i uh, like captaincy drama happens whether or not it's franchise cricket or t20 cricket that's all i want to say <laughs> like uh, and uh, there's there's a lot of uh, like there's a lot of talk about how the relationship with the board is and given it is deeply connected to how uh, politics works there right like based on whoever is in charge that way the board changes and that way uh, you have different people in charge of cricket in the country so i'm guessing every time like it's it's tumultuous because uh, of the nature in which the board also runs like based on whoever is in charge the captaincy also i have noticed the captaincy has been changing over the last couple of years so who knows i i just uh, i i just hope that it settles down before uh, i think what june 8th june 9th is the first match yeah yeah so yeah <laughs> let's see i think in the background another kalesh has been going around in pakistani cricket as around this whole azam khan's ability to run 2 kilometers like at a stretch i think they, i'm not sure whether it has been <laughs> officially verified yet but there's been this huge like fight going on apparently pakistan cricket board has organized like a probable scam for some 26 players or something and they were made to do like 2 kilometer runs and azam khan was able to do only like 1.5 kilometers in some 12 minutes and he could not run any longer and that's like triggered of a massive fight uh, online as to whether like a cricketer should be able to run 2 kilometers whether that should be a metric for selection etc etc so where do you guys stand on this basically i am exactly what zainab says though that i think if he is playing like 20 odd games in psl and he is being able to comfortably hold himself on the field as a keeper and be able to score runs at will and he's really striking the ball super hard 
he 100% deserves a place to play i think you can find any metric you want to try and keep a person out like you can always like i don't think he can swim i don't think he can climb 50 floors at the same time and all those bullshit i think anybody <laughs> can come up with but those are not the metrics that is required because on the field he simon again should even i think in uh, i i wasn't so closely watching the psl until the knockouts and in the final also i think he was always uh, performing exactly what he's required or better so i definitely think in this super broken pakistan setup where they are always wondering who's going to come and score they have iftikhar sometimes who has to try and like swing a bit and all of that i think somebody like azam who could completely change the game he could be like he could sunil narayan in innings and go come and score 50 of 20 and nobody knows what happened like i think i have somebody like that is a huge asset to the pakistan team so i think that he should be definitely part of the squad but you're right the narrative in the media and whoever controls this will find a way to keep that poor chap out i think it's also a function of uh, like if, if rizwan is your vice captain and he's your keeper select then like azam khan by like you you had to pick him as a pure batter but then you also have uh, four bowlers uh, i think shain has improved his ability as a batter but you also don't have like you don't have that you need enough all rounders and bowlers in your team so that automatically eliminates someone who's playing as a pure batter like those are the things i feel will uh will weigh uh this is bad well no i but i feel those two right no i feel those why can't rizwan play as the pure bat why can't rizwan play as the what... pure bat and he can keep rizwan is a pretty decent fielder and you can play him he's supposedly the best batter on the t20 setup right now for them who's consistent keep him as a pure bat and let azam khan keep so that you don't have to like try and find a way to hide him on the field i haven't seen him field no no, no. The, the the point i'm trying to make is if it comes it, it, his he has more than uh, proved his ability with the bat and as a keeper right so it will come down to whether or not it it meets what the team make or the team 11 needs to be at the time it it need not like if he is fit enough to hit the ball and dive around to catch behind the stumps or squat behind the stumps i don't think it should be an issue like quick fitness like there is a basic level of fitness that you need to pass which uh, i if you are able to stand and bowl it's it's a 20 over game at the end of the day if you are able to stand and figure that out i think most of the athletes nowadays can pass that so uh, it, it it i really should only come down to whether what the team make up needs to be and not whether or not the players who are already actually match fit are like fitter than they need to be i feel i am i am agreeing with they i think shan masood will feature they have like players who i don't really think are supposed to supposed to be even part of a t20 setup who are trying to get their way in i think azam is the most t20 batter there is in that in that uh, in that country so, if he if anybody should be picked it should be him in anyway, pdp over here so how how is the, the there was a huge debate about whether babar and rizwan are batting at the right tempo and stuff like that i mean to me those are actually more pertinent questions than whether a guy can run 2 kilometers or 5 kilometers or whatever it is so the past psl rizwan like metamorphosed himself to become the kl rahul of pakistan cricket like he literally like married scored, like his other six... daughter <laughs> <laughs> but it's true his strike rate was not like 120 130 ish he was like yeah. one end uh, other guys at the other end were given license to whack the ball around and uh, the thing is he has made it to four finals by, by with the same tactic like yeah. so it's uh, but that's the other thing right like psl ipl and all they are like you have the foreign player rule you have uh, the uh, like you only have like some uh, 8 to 14 games where you have to prove yourself like it's not the same as playing for the team where only now you came to that babar azam is back <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it's it's going to be it, 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 i i it's going to be that's the thing you can never uh like a, a captaincy drama is always going to be fun whether or not like whether it's in mumbai indians or whether it's the pakistan cricket board like it's it's going to be there and it's like one aspect of cricket that we're never going to tire of talking about because the captain has such big responsibilities that way he like unless you are dhoni you uh, got dhoni in your team and he's the one actually captaining but uh yeah i guess like that's all i had to add <laughs> there is one other we have bangladesh versus sri lanka shall we just spend a little bit of time on that one if possible sure uh, you hey kaus did you do you think this usman khan fellow will play for pakistan though no i think it's 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 all see it's up in the air we don't know how the the babar azam thing came as a surprise like like about a week ago when it was like oh there are rumblings of this happening uh it like i feel shayan sahab should have been given a longer run but it also felt like he was a little uh, like underdone when he was captaining in new zealand and when 
like he got i don't know the psl's campaign was just funny at the end of the day so like we, we don't know we'll see in, 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 that's the thing that more and more will coming out of retirement every, every other day i don't know I, 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 at one point will inzi be added to the squad like what's going to happen <laughs> Afridi, da Afridi, Afridi. First Afridi will come back. Yeah, if he is retired first, I don't remember him retiring yet. But uh, sure, it's a good chance he can come back. Hang, <laughs> Nagin Darby, over to you. Nagin Darby, I I've been following it. I've I've actually been watching some of the cricket over there. Um, I was really. Hey, one impressed. second, one second, one second. When have you been working, da? <laughs> like <laughs> Bangladesh Sri Lanka test match in the morning like boss boss this is evening. easter easter long weekend <laughs> easter long weekend i've really been watching but this is this is um bangladesh have uh, sorry sri lanka has got 531 this is a qu- this is this is another quiz 531 and not a single century in that that's a massive score without a single century they had uh 1 2 3 Four, five, six, fifties in the uh, in the in the match with a high score of five ninety two by uh, coming to Mendes. Um, can anyone say what's the highest score with uh, without a century? I... The highest total team score without a century. I think this is a record. I can't be sure. I, 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 my own. I only uh, filter for this. Is have you watched this game live? I watched this game. Yeah, I did. No, Today I watched it. No, the game that you're talking about, which has a record. Have you watched that game live? No. So the game that I think it was five twenty four. Uh, uh, probably Kanpur, New Zealand versus India. Wow. Um, the highest total without a century. So there, there are a couple of couple of games that come to mind. One is Mohinder Amarnath scored, uh, and I think that may be the five twenty four. Mohinder Amarnath scored a cent. Uh, th- this is a seventy. He scored. That was the highest score ever in that game completely. This was in New against New Zealand. That was five twenty four. There was another one. Um, so so Kaus, you said something about have I watched this game live? Which one are you talking about? So, like my my question was, if you're posing this question to which is the higher, which is the total that uh, has the highest uh, total without a guy scoring more than fifty, I was assumed it is from your era of watching cricket and not from something I have seen. Yeah, watching cricket. Some some serious so, boomer so, shots are firing here. Right? Yeah, I know <laughs> shots fired very, from many many places. I am catching IPL strays here. What do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> uh this i this bangladesh thing like, the only i i would say the only slight talking point is shakib returning for this test and uh, nothing happening when he was bowling to angelo matthews i expected something some time out uh, gesture some staring nothing there these nothing. people are proper professionals like bowling i think shakib was bowling some like, 30 40 overs or something uh, in, in in the match it's like this is like, the, 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 look look hmm. this is this is exact hang on He actually bowled thirty-seven. You remember exactly how many overs he bowled, Ra? I I watched I watched it before coming before coming onto the call. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's uh, uh, the the only way this thing will be remembered, uh, the series will be remembered is uh, how the game. No, how she will game the system to make sure Hasaranga will will face uh-huh. a two-match ban here. That before before. Yeah, like that's it. And that review, of course, I don't. That but Bang- Bangladesh and those reviews that do, there are, there are many examples of this. This is this. <laughs> This, this, that review from Asher doesn't even crack the top five. <laughs> can you set up PDP? Can you set up the review and and talk about it because it'll be it's, it's I think actually quite quite interesting. No, so BC shared this on our group, and I think we can maybe link the the tweet and the show notes or something. Uh, but there is this amazing review of a batsman, uh, a batter stepping down the wicket and playing a forward defensive, and the ball. Appears to go exactly off the middle. It's just it's it. You would not even think twice about this ball. It's the kind of thing you see all the time and with uh, red ball cricket in the subcontinent. And yet, they go for a review, and the umpire is looking at the bowler like, why? Like, what exactly are you reviewing here? Like, the only thing you should be reviewing is Your whether you should be taking this review at all. But they go ahead. They and you're waiting for the twist, right? Like maybe there is some genius thing that some genius has seen. and you're watching the whole thing on slow mo and 
your anticipation is building like maybe there is something maybe it flicked his pad on the way maybe it was pad first nothing you end up everyone ends up spending a lot of time watching like a boring forward defensive for no reason at all and at the end of it uh, there is not even like a hint of embarrassment from the captain you know either the fielding captain or the bowler the, the, the reason I say it doesn't crack the top five also because Bangladesh have done the exact same thing I think a couple of years ago in the New Zealand yeah. test. Exactly. Yes. Exact same thing. I yeah. think like Taskin was bowling and uh, he asked for it. I think this is the same series where they won the first test and this, uh, uh, the, their first, I think they won the Christchurch test. This must have been, I think, got Hamilton or something. I'm not sure. But uh, exact same thing happened. That's why I'm saying this doesn't, doesn't even crack the top five. I have seen this happen time and time again. <laughs> so, so this so this is the, the only parallel I can think of from uh, from my days as a assistant sales manager was you would be given an entitlement for what you're allowed to spend in a day on food. And if you have eaten your fill and you still have another like 100 bucks on that quota, you will order something even though you have no intention of completing it. Like you will... It's okay. I will take the review. It's okay. I will get the bloody ice cream. Even if I feel like puking, I will get it because I'm entitled to that extra 100 bucks. <laughs> there is no other parallel to the idiocy of that review. No, no, no. no. I would say the, the better parallel would be when, uh, or at least I would say, uh, like, because our face is in an exam hall where uh, you are struggling and you can see that you can only fill one answer book and the guy in front of you has asked for four supplements. Huh. Right. And it turns out he's asking for supplements just because he wants to. He has also put the same thing as I have, but four supplements are empty. Why? Right? Because screw it. I might as well waste the resources. <laughs> <able to> <laughs> this one's even better. Now. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it, it, I, I, I feel so not like that. It's a, you can't even call it a waste of a review because like Sri Lanka batted, like I they didn't even bat really well, but it was largely chanceless. Like they did not allow Bangladesh to get on top in any way. So, uh, like, I, it, was a, it was worth a punt. The only thing is, it was a, like, it's, it's, it's like having 90, Sometimes. it's like having 19 on blackjack and asking the, guy, the dealer to hit one more. Like, you, you know, the next card is not going to be like, why are you asking? Like, but yeah. But you have to yeah, keep con- checking occasionally if the TV umpire is awake or not. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Somebody is hitting 530 yeah. runs against you and your bowlers are garbage. You want to be like, is he awake? Is he watching some other IPL game boy at the side of his phone? <laughs> I think so you want to occasionally send him a review. I think I think the captain was checking whether the fielders were awake or not. Like before awesome. the review was taken, like you could clearly hear on Stump Mike, somebody asking, bat lagbe, like two or three people saying, lagbe na, lagbe na, <laughs> like, bat lagbe na, <laughs> full confidence, bat lagbe na. <laughs> After the bat, only touch the ground rather than ball, it's a horrendous review, it's super, super bad. Yalo. I think, I think that series is like, uh, in need of some serious branding, they should like, not, I mean, just like some, Richard's Botham trophy or like some trophy like that. I think they should like call this Sri Lanka Bangladesh. No, no, no. They should call it like Khalid Mahmood Eric Kupashanta trophy or something like that, basically. I think that like <laughs> it's, 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 it's not even the Nagin dance that's the best part yeah. it's not time out it's not time out time out is a, cel- is a celebration it's not even Nagin dance P- PJK is laughing at the moment right he's saying what the hell are you guys talking about that guy brought a helmet to the photo with the trophy and all that like this is some like you see the lows that are worse than is possible like they really uh, and there was a failed uh, monker as well. Andy, like, Andy, everything. Andy, Andy got injured after the celebration. That's the best yeah. part. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, it's just beautiful. It's like watching Big Boss on a cricket field. <laughs> More Kalesh than tennis ball cricket. Mm. There you go. Hello. All right. Have we exhausted everything? Yep. Yeah, I think so. I think we're good. Yeah, I think I think just a customary mention of Sanju Samson before like Tony feels like he has to do three pods on the row again. Like so <laughs> good start again <laughs> by Rajasthan Royals and Sanju Samson would look no, so good I, in I, the early part I of the I think season, yeah, yeah, right? I think we can pin that tweet. Sanju Samson is awesome. Deserves <laughs> to be the Indian team, but isn't. 
there is an indian t20 side which will have tilak verma surya kumar yadav sanju samson rituraj gaikwad but sadly we will never see that indian t20 team for at least another 3 4 years that's all i will say but yeah thank thank you so much for listening um and please leave us five star reviews wherever you are consuming your podcast we will be back next week until then from all of us it's bye bye, bye.